These are malicious creatures. Don't trust these things. Don't approach these things. And whatever you do, don't take this cat. Oh, great. It's the first time in a while that you felt like going out. But in the middle of your walk, it starts to rain. Typical, but it is just a sign that you should have stayed home today. Yeah, you can always try again tomorrow. Right? You turn to head home. You turn to head home. When? Don't take it home. Huh? What was that? There's only a few people around the street. Makes sense to the increase of missing persons around the area recently. Well, that and the weather. Was, was the cat gonna take me home? Is it gonna kidnap me? Is it gonna cat at me? But none of them react to the sound at all. Curiosity guiding your steps, you follow the sound to the entrance of a dark, dingy alleyway. You timidly enter the alley and walk forward. The ground, dampened by the rain, makes your steps sound louder and more confident than you actually feel. Mm-mm. Don't trust them. Don't trust them. Don't approach them. Don't take them home. Finally, the sound source comes into view in the cold, dim light of the alley. At the end of the alley, in a big cardboard box. Oh, it's so cute! It's a cat. Huh. I guess that should have been obvious. An interesting-looking cat. Its pretty yellow eyes shine like gold among the street, the dark sea of its black fur. Mm -mm. It puts its front paws up on the edge of the box and looks up at you. <coughs> no, don't do it. Oh, it's so cute. You're so cute. Yeah. So, so cute. And it definitely knows it. You've never had much of an opinion one way or another about cats before. But if they're all like this one, it's a shock they've already found out a way to rule the world. You don't think you'd mind bowing down to a feline overlord. Where is this going? See, this is, the, this is the effect they have on you. You look around the alley with a small frown. Who leaves cats in, a cardboard, in cardboard boxes these days anyway? Wouldn't they just jump out and leave the box eventually? Not if they want you to take them home. The cat doesn't answer you. Well, it's just a little rude, don't you think? Good storm again, because it's storming. It also doesn't do, do as you suggest and leave the box. It's just looking at you, as if waiting for you to make the next move. Mm. Mm. Don't take it home, take it home. I just warned you guys to not take it home. I'm gonna take it home. I you know, I got a soft spot. You know what? You reach into the box and pick the cat up, holding it out in front of you. Why not? <coughs> mm. You're all alone and well. I'm kind of in the same boat myself, so... You bring the cat close. You didn't realize it was shivering until just then, but it slowly breathes easier as it presses into your chest. Why not stick together, right? At least for a little while. Okay, that's adorable. You think, a little while, probably more like a day. You'll be responsible and take it to the shelter tomorrow. But for now, you're not going to take it to the shelter, are you? Let's get you out of the rain, okay? <coughs> you stop by a small local pet store for some cat food. Then head back home. You live in a modest apartment. One bedroom, one bathroom. When you live living alone in it. So it feels weird having another living being inside it after so long. Even if it is just a cat. After locking the front door and placing the cat on the floor, you watch for a moment as it curiously explores the new environment. Leaving the feline to its own devices, you set about making the both of you some dinner. You take out the can of cat food and open it with a tab on top. You put some cat food on a saucer and lick your tongue to click your tongue to the call 
the cat over to you. It perks up at your beckoning and rushes over. It looks at the plate of food. So far, so good. And completely ignores it. What, you want some flesh? You want some human flesh? I bet you do. You cats are all the same. Not hungry, I guess. You try not to let it annoy you. The cat doesn't understand the concept of money to appreciate that you spent your hard-earned cash on it. It's just a cat. After all. I'll just leave it here if you get hungry later, okay? The cat rubs its body against your legs. With a purr. You smile. That's enough of a thanks for you. It follows you into the kitchen as you start your own dinner. You decide that you have enough ingredients for a sandwich. Bread toasted. Mayo and mustard spread. Turkey and cheese and lettuce. Perfectly placed. Tomato sliced. Ow. You wince as you cut your finger on the knife while slicing a tomato. Stupid. You feel a little embarrassed for such a blunder and sigh, tossing the knife onto the cutting board. You're about to head to the bathroom for a bandage when the cat hops, hops onto the counter. It sniffs at the knife and meows, almost pointedly at you. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm alright. It was just an... You watch as the cat starts to... Lick lightly, but enthusiastically, at the blood on the knife. At your blood. You're so shocked by, by the time you come to your senses, the knife has been completely licked clean. The cat sits back, staring at you. You feel a little uneasy. Sure, cats are meat-eating predators, well, that was just a little weird, right? Sure, you're no cat expert. That was definitely not something an ordinary cat would do. Right? <laughs> well, regardless, you're not about to abandon a cat in need while it's raining outside. Not after all your efforts. You were going to take it to the shelter tomorrow anyways. What's one night of awkwardness? Weird or not, it's just a cat. The rest of the evening unfortunately goes downhill from there. Even after covering up your finger cut with a bandage, the cat keeps trying to lick at the wound. This is a demon cat and I think we all know it. While you're eating your sandwich, while you're cleaning up the kitchen, while you're trying to watch TV, you gently push it away every time. But you're just trying to get worried at the strange behavior. What if it's got a taste for blood and thinks you're food now? You're not sure what you'd do if it starts to get more aggressive. You keep thinking about the cat food sitting on the corner, untouched. Okay. Uh, come on, enough already. You shove it away a little more forcefully this time, out of annoyance. You feel bad immediately, but before you can do anything, the cat the cat meows sharply at you and dashes off around the corner into the hall. You sigh deeply. At this point, you're just worried that it's going to take a bite out of you in your sleep. Maybe a vet will have an idea of how to calm it down? You can only hope. You don't have many other options left other than tossing the cat out in the rain. After finding the number of a local vet, you pick up your landloin and... The lights just... went out? G great, just great, the rain must have knocked out the power. You check your cell phone, only to find that it's out of batteries. Well, that's just perfect. You must have forgotten to charge it before leaving out earlier. The outage had, the outage had been so spur of the moment that it had no doubt messed with your usual routine. You grab a flashlight and turn it on. It's quiet. It's too quiet. Did the rain stop? But then, why did the power go out? You look outside. The sky is pitch black. What time is it? You turn to check the clock. The cat sits on top of your digital clock, staring at you. Thinking now, you realize the clock shouldn't be working at all with the power outage. But the numbers are lit up and are going completely haywire. The cat stares at you. It's completely still. You think it was just a statue if you didn't know any better. 
It's not giving off any indication that it's alive. It's not blinking. It's not even breathing. But its eyes. This isn't normal. You're afraid. You want to run. You're afraid of letting the cat out of your sight. You consider tossing the cat out, after all. But as soon as the thought enters your head, you feel a sharp urge to vomit. Those eyes, its eyes, hold you still. Even with your flashlight trained on it, its pupils are large. The flashlight flickers. The cat is gone. Fear immediately grips your mind. The silence punctuated with the rapid pumping of blood in your heart. It's overwritten as your ears slowly start to pick up the sound of static all around you. How is the clock working? With no power. You don't know why such a question matters at the moment. But you feel as if having the answer will make sense of everything that's happening. That order will be restored. But no answer comes to mind. You back away from the clock and feel as if the air itself coils tightly and abruptly in response. Like a predator prepared to pounce, but waiting, waiting for your next move. But you're afraid to move. You're afraid to even take a breath. But you can't stay still forever, right? Whatever is watching you, you can already feel its impatience. It's too eager. You don't know how you know this. You can sense it as clearly as if it had whispered. <sighs> oh, did not like that, did not like that, did not like that. Right into your ear. Right into your soul. It won't let you wait it out. Not that you could, not that you could, even if it did. You can't stay here. You have to run. With this thought, a sudden primal instinct awakens within you, making you tear yourself into hasty bursts of movement, of action. But you're still weak from the fear's grip on your mind. Your legs tangle together under you in your haste, and you fall to the ground. What? A sharp pain explodes in the side of your foot. At first, you think you've broken your ankle, but something warm and wet trickles down your length down the length of your foot, pooling underneath it. You hear the sound of metal scraping on tiles after skidding across the floor as if it had been kicked. Oh. Well. Winded from your fall, you look up in a daze and see the object glinting in a strange light coming from it from outside. The light pouring in from your now open front door. Thoughts of how, when, who, what, in regards of your inexplicable inexplicably open door screeched to a halt as your brain finally identifies a metallic object you've been staring at. It's your kitchen knife, and it's still tinted red from earlier blunder. But that's not right. Wasn't it completely licked clean by the dot dot dot? You gulp dryly at the pain of your foot. <laughs> You barely have time to wonder how the knife ended up on your living room floor to be stepped on, instead of resting on your cutting board in the kitchen where you left it. <laughs> okay, it's a little creepy. When you spy something in the darkness just beyond the knife, it spies right back at you. A pair of glowing golden eyes come forward as the cat emerges from the shadows into the light from your doorway. It pads lightly over to the knife, as if skipping in delight. And bends down to lap at the blood dripping from the blade. Ah, ah. Your senses slowly begin to overwhelm you. The chill of the air as it starts to suffocate you under its weight. The sound of your shaky breaths discordant against the static now piercing your skull, the dryness of your tongue spreading to your throat. The incomprehensible sight 
of the stray you've taken in, licking away at your kitchen knife, once again, completely clean. With such a small tongue and like no time at all, you got that done fast. The sense of blood from the fresh wound of your foot. Blood? <laughs> Too soon, come to hold on, stay back. Golden eyes light up to you as if response to your sudden realization. Blood. You're hurt. Your foot is bleeding. You're bleeding. You're bleeding. The cat barely moves, shoulders twitching as if considering the act of pouncing forward. But you're already on your feet and out the door. You run, rather limp, down the empty street. The sky is black and bleeding red. There's a strange light emitting from nowhere that casts everything else in white. The houses, the trees, the road, even you. Everything. Except your blood. You can just barely glimpse the bloody imprints on your injured foot, leaving in your wake with every impact it makes with the ground. It hurts. It hurts. But you can't stop. You don't stop. Not when the shadows grow around you. Not when you feel the gaze of eyes all over you. Not when the road ahead of you is darkened by a long shadow of something behind you. Even then, you don't stop running. Because... If that's the cat right there ahead of you, then... What in the world is behind you? Oh, first choice. Um, I'm very curious what's behind me. I'm gonna look behind me. Huh? Interesting. How very, very. Interesting. Ending zero. It begins? What? Uh... Something happened. You think, anyways. You can't really remember what. Oh my god! 40?! Oh my god. Oh, I could have been saving. Uh, let me just skip ahead to where I was. Wait, what? This wasn't an option before. You barely reach out your arms before the cat eagerly leaps and climbs over your shoulders. It butts his head against you, nuzzling against it. You can't help but smile at the cat's enthusiasm. I don't remember any of this. On the way home, you briefly consider getting cat food. That would be a waste of time. Um... Do something with the cat? Like what? Uh... Pet the cat? It's not every day you have access to a cute fluffy animal. What else is there to do but pet it to your heart's content? You sit on the floor in your living room and click your tongue to call the cat over. The cat dashes over you immediately climbing into your lap. Poor thing, you just want some attention, don't you? Alright, alright. You carefully pet the cat. A rub behind an ear. A scratch under the chin. A smooth sweep along the back. <laughs> Good? You keep petting the cat in your lap, enjoying this bonding time together. Oh, but the cat starts to get restless after a while. Let's do something else. What happens if I keep petting it? <laughs> uh, wait, hold on. I'm gonna do something else, and then I'm gonna save here. I'm gonna keep petting the cat. I just decided to keep putting the cat. What's with the music? You're not quite ready to stop. You feel so calm. The repetitive action soothing your, your usually overworked mind. You keep petting. 
Meow. The cat leads away from your next head pet. It's trying to get out of your lap. Keep petting. Ugh. When you scratch on the cat's chin, it bites at your fingers. It might be bleeding, but really, it barely hurts. More of a warning than anything. <laughs> the cat struggles in your hold. It's watching you closely. Keep petting. You keep petting the cat. Ugh! The cat bites off your finger. It hurts. You're definitely bleeding now. But for some reason, you just can't stop. You don't know what it is. Its fur is so much softer than you realized. You think it would be shining in a faint light of your living room, but as if the darkness of the cat's black coat is sucking in all the illumination around it, rendering it completely null. You're drawn to it, like you're somehow holding a deep, dark abyss right in your lap. Are, are we cool with the petting now? Seems calmer now. Munching on your severed finger. Oh, of course it is. The stump between your thumb and middle finger is leaking. But you keep petting. You fret that your blood will ruin its fur. The cat no longer seems to mind. Time passes. It's dark out now. Soft as the fur is, your palm has started to feel raw and damp under the constant friction from your petting. You think faintly that maybe you've had enough. You start to lift your hand from the cat. And in flash! Your entire hand is separated from your wrist. It flops onto your lap beside the cat. The cat's claws on its front right paw glisten with crimson red liquid. You don't feel it for a moment, but your body tenses, anticipating the pain as you blankly watch the cat lick at the bloody palm of your severed hand. Huh, it hurts. It really really hurts. Then, the cat looks up at you and you feel compelled to keep petting. You're reluctant, but you're also afraid of what will happen if you don't heed the call. What will you lose next if you try to resist again? You were hurt for your insistent petting earlier, yet now you've been hurt for trying to stop? defies all logic, but that's what scares you. There's no reasoning with such fickle whims. You feebly try to raise your uninjured hand to pet the cat, but it stiffens, golden eyes glistening dangerously. Well, all right then. You raise your bleeding stump and resume petting to the best of your ability. Oh my god. You pet. And you bleed. You pet. And you bleed. You pet. And you bleed. You pet. And you. Ending seven. Personal boundaries. God, ending, uh, knowing how to take no for an answer is an important life lesson. Thank you. Uh, let's feed the cat. The cat looks hungry, so you decide to feed it. You're regretting not stopping for food earlier as you have much left. But you don't have much left. Grocery stopping day is tomorrow, after all. You head to the kitchen, click your tongue, and train the cat follows after you. It leaps nimbly in the kitchen counter and watches as you search for meal options. Let's see. You find some things you expect. A can of tuna in the pantry. That sounds perfect. Some leftover meatloaf in the fridge. And what's that? You realize there's a tightly sealed Tupperware on the bottom shelf of the fridge. 
You don't recognize it. A foul odor is leaking from the container. Whatever's inside can't be safe for human consumption. Well, it's safe for cat consumption, probably. Uh, but the cat seems excited about it, practically salivating over it. Still, you're the caretaker here. You're the one who needs to decide what's best to feed a hungry cat. So you'll feed it. Oh, hold on. Uh, yeah, save. Tuna! Cats like fish, right? Shrugging, you take out the tuna for the cat and the meatloaf for yourself. You put the frankly ominous container back in the fridge. Cat looks a little disappointed. Tough. You'll need to dispose of that weird whatever it is later. You open the tuna and spoon it a small, into a small saucer. You put the saucer on the kitchen counter next to the cat. You don't think you should be encouraging it to eat up there. But you figure it'll make up for electing not to feed it the toxic goop it wanted. The cat looks like it finds the tuna. Acceptable. You'll take it. Eat up, kitty. As the cat digs into its meal, you go about heating up the meatloaf in the microwave. While setting the time, you hear... Hmm? You turn and see that the plate is completely empty. Oh, that was quick. You need to pace yourself. What the? You... You watch. Baffled as the cat continues to hiccup, causing... Little bubbles to float out of its mouth? Okay. That's okay. You can... You could process this. It's not completely out of the realm of what's possible, right? Right. Best not to think too hard about it. Soon enough, the room is full of the floating bubbles. The cat releases a final tiny bubble before yawning and laying down right there on the counter. Well, glad you enjoyed it. The bubbles haven't left the room or popped. They seem to be Pretty resilient. Wait. <laughs> what? What's that? As one of the bubbles floats closer to you, you see that there's actually something inside of it. A tiny, furry... fish? It's just getting weirder and weirder. Still, you can't help but marvel at the impossible wonder in front of you. You lift a hand... You extend a finger towards the bubble, carefully press it against the surface. The little fish inside lashes out, viciously sinking tiny fangs into your finger. It doesn't really hurt that much at first, but then... Ah! Ow! What? Pain starts to climb through your finger to the rest of your hand. Past your wrist, could it be some kind of... Venom? You fling your arm around and attempt to dislodge the fish, but... Oh... <sighs> you accidentally knock your arm into several of the bubbles floating around. More tiny ravenous fish latch onto your flesh. You stumble back out of the pain in sudden bout of dizziness, only to bump into more bubbles. More fish digging their teeth into your back. <sighs> it hurts. You're getting dizzy. You've got to get out. You deliriously try to stumble out of the kitchen, but the entire room is filled with the deadly bubbles. And by the time you collapse to the ground, you're absolutely covered in tiny, angry, biting fish. Your legs, your torso, your arms, your face. The pain is unbearable. You can feel in your skin, in your teeth, in your eyes, in your hair. And it's consuming. You can't even feel yourself convulsing or crying. You don't black out. Your eyes are so rolling up into your skull when you grasp out your last breath. Ending 8. Fish out of water. Oh my god. <laughs> what the... Uh, meatloaf, I guess.
You get the feeling that the cat won't be too impressed with anything that comes out of a can, and you're not about to feed it whatever the heck that toxic sludge is. So it's settled. A tuna sandwich for you and your leftover meatloaf for your feline guest. You ignore the cat's disappointed meows as you put the weird container back in the fridge to dispose of later. You warm up the meatloaf in the microwave. You place the now warm meatloaf on a saucer next to the cat on the counter. You don't think you should be encouraging it to eat up there, but yeah, yeah. The cat looks like it finds the meatloaf. Interesting. Works for you. Eat up, kitty. The cat digs in the meal. You go about searching for some bread for your tuna sandwich. You, so you're, you're so distracted by your search that you only hear, you only just barely hear. Huh? You turn around and see that the meatloaf has only one, maybe two bites taken out of it. But more alarmingly, there seems to be a red trail of something. Leading away from where the cat has been sitting, and off the edge of the counter towards the living room. Is... Is that... Blood? I'm gonna look down, my foot's gone. You look at the strange sound coming from around the corner, further into your apartment. You attempt to steal your nerves. Taking a breath, you walk around the counter to head into the living room. Splat. You stepped into something warm, and wet, and red. You resist the urge to vomit and step away from the trail of... of... You follow the trail in the living room and see that leads into the hall. It's getting louder. It's definitely in the hall. You feel like you can hear your heartbeat. You hope whatever is in the hall can't. Your body shakes as you feel yourself step forward. And forward. And forward. And forward. You peek around the corner. Nothing. There's nothing there. What? You walk further into the hall and see the trail leads all the way down to the end of it. There's nothing there. You don't quite feel relief, but at least... You feel something wet and warm drip down your cheek. Something very warm. You swipe your shaking hand across it. Pull it back to see your fingers covered in... Something... You look up, and what you see can only be described as meat. What the? F the entire ceiling of the hallway is covered in a thick, undulating, writhing layer of pulsating meat. And at center is a single glowing eyeball, frantically rolling around in every direction. Until it lands squarely on you. Ah! Uh, ah! Uh. You try to take a step back desperately to escape the hallway, to escape this thing, but before you can even scream, meaty tendrils shoot out and grab you. No! Let me go! They pull you up and up into a pair of slowly opening jaws, and then... Ending 9. Leftovers. You fed the cat some leftover meatloaf. It liked it okay. Mystery food. Is this really a good idea? Uh, fine, I guess if this is what you want, you open the container and... Ugh! Ugh! You just barely managed to keep from throwing up. Just barely. The stench is overwhelming. Ugh. Yeah, yeah, give me a minute. You hazard to uh, uh, you hazard to look at the contents of the container, but you honestly can't understand what you're supposed to be looking at. Everything is just mashed together. What exactly everything consists of is a mystery. You're more than happy to keep unsolved. Different shapes, different sizes, different textures. Not the color, though. All of it is the same color. The most unfortunate-looking look sha unfortunate shade of gray 
you've ever seen. Tinted with the nauseating wet green film over the top. Ugh! Am, am I supposed to warm it up, or... You don't really know how to serve it. Any utensil or plate touches gets thrown out immediately. No exceptions. Your hands are going to scrub with soap and hot water within an inch of their lives after this. You decide against putting this crap in your microwave. You doubt it would ever taste or smell any better warm. Not wanting to hold anymore, you shake your head and practically toss the container next to the cat on the counter. The cat enthusiastically dives for the toxic-looking sludge, sniffing it as if savoring the scent. You turn to the fridge and close it. You've lost your appetite. You're about to head to the bathroom, wash your hands for the next hour or so when... Ugh. Ow! A sharp pain in your foot causes you to stumble. You catch yourself in the kitchen sink and look down to see the tip of your sock is... Red. And then the red, slowly spreading to the rest of your sock. Are you... Bleeding? You quickly reach down and pull off your sock to see the damage. Your middle toe is... Gone! It's just gone! It's just a stump and left of its place, steadily leaking blood onto the floor. Uh, uh, you clumsily step back as if it would help you get away from what you were seeing. The blood trail simply follows your movements. 911. You have to call 911. Phone. Where's the. Uh, 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 what? Your tongue is. Uh, uh, I. Uh, what's happening to me? Uh, uh, you slowly look over the. Find the cat is still eating, completely unbothered by your suffering. Nothing. Not bothering to try and stop the blood from dribbling out of your mouth. You keep watching in a daze as the cat happily chews a gross piece of. Wait. Is that. Look more closely at the mystery food in the cat's jaws. It looks vaguely familiar. It looks like... A tongue? Uh. Before you can even think to do anything to stop it, the cat dives on the counter again and bites into a piece that looks kind of like a... Uh. You collapse on the floor, clutching your torso. You writhe around in the blood-streaked tiles, crying something. There's something inside of you just... Ugh, oh. Blood pours out deep within you. Whatever that was, felt important. And now it's probably gone too. It hurts. It hurts so much. S stop. Please. You weakly try to reach out the cat on the counter above you. Your vision blurs from the effort, from the pain, from your tears, from... <laughs> your eyes your eyes you fall limply back on the floor you're leaking blood all over from all over your foot, your mouth your insides, your eye sockets you feel your life fading away too and that's fine if it means not feeling the pain of losing another part of you then hopefully the cat will take its time eating your eyeballs and give you time to just, just, ending 10, you are what you eat. Oh my god, I'm kind of hungry. Let's play with the cat. Poor thing was probably bored stiff, sitting next to that old box all day. Just watching crowds of people walking by them, ignoring them. You can't just leave them alone as soon as you're home. A little interspecies socializing won't kill you, right? Oh, you just want some attention, don't you? Wanna play? <laughs> okay then. What, what to play though? Oh god. Look for some yarn. If every moving cartoon involving cats that you've watched since childhood is to be believed, then you can't deduce with almost absolute 
certainty. That cat's freaking low yarn. Probably. Yarn. You unearth, unearth some of the uh, some from an old box in a hallway closet that's filled with knickknacks from various abandoned hobbies. You consider handling handling the bar of bright red yarn over to the cat and supervising from the side. But that would defeat the idea of playing together, wouldn't it? You cut off a decent length of string from the yarn ball and go back to the living room. You look so uninterested. Cat is resting on the floor. It's not asleep. When it looks up at the- when he, as you enter the living room, you feel like it could doze off right then and there. You'll fix that. You smirk a little, confident with your surprise. Oh! Oh! I got some yarn for you! And then a piece of yarn dangled just above the floor, pinched between your thumb and your index finger. The sudden shift in the cat's demeanor makes your heart start to beat a little faster. Its posture has barely changed at all. Just a subtle shift of the head and ears. A slight tension in the shoulders. A sharpness in the gaze as it lo locks onto the yarn dangling in an inch above the floor. The cat could still pass as being almost relaxed. Calm. And yet the air is thick with its eagerness to lunge forward. Waiting for the right moment to strike. You feel as if you just witnessed the awakening of the perfect predator. You're almost afraid of what will happen once you make the first move. But it will be you who makes the first move. You take a deep breath. Relax your shoulders. And... <laughs> <laughs> Take a deep breath. Relax your shoulders. Okay. Yoink! The cat had lunged in the instant you wiggled the yarn, but you're faster. It completely misses as you flick your wrist, making the yarn recoil out of reach like a terrified snake. Having overshot the landing of its eagerness, the cat stumbles and looks around as if shocked as its failed attack. You generously click your tongue to help it reorient it. The cat whips its head around at the sound. You slightly taken aback by the intensity of its stare on the yarn, but you persist. You wiggle the yarn encouragingly. You wiggle the yarn again encouragingly, and yes, maybe a little tauntingly. This time, the cat anticipates the yarn upward dodge and leaps up to swipe at it. But you're already one step ahead, puppeting the yarn to dance gracefully out of reach once more. <laughs> Come on, you can do it. A little condescending, but it's can't seem to help it. For some reason, it feels a little too good knocking the feline down a peg or two. At least it seems to be enjoying itself. You hope, anyway. You keep going. <laughs> the guest movements have gone more aggressive, but it, it must be getting frustrated. You could swear it nearly took a shot at your eye the last time. It had jumped so high and erratically. You kept You've been keeping the yarn in constant motion, afraid to slow down. Your wrist is starting to get tired. The cat doesn't seem to be losing any energy, though. It's like... It's getting faster. And... Faster. <laughs> Your wrist finally cramps sharply, making you lose control of the yarn's motion as the tip of it brushly light brushes lightly against your stomach. Ah. Hmm. I didn't see that one coming. Ugh! Pain rips slow across your torso. Into your torso. Whoa! Blood pours out of your mouth. In a daze, you look down and see red blooming slowly along the bottom of your shirt, around the tears in the fabric. <clears throat> Ugh. Ugh. You watch his long, thick ropes of Something, I'm pretty sure is what we call intestines in the horror gaming community, pour out in front under your shirt into a bloody heap on the floor at your feet. A single red streaked rope still hangs from you, connecting you to all that mess. Are... are those your... 
You curl to the ground and topple over to your side. Your vision has gone blurry. But... You could just make out the shape of something small and deep, inky black as it walks over and inspects your... Oh god. They're your intestines. Before it starts giddily roll around the mass of your bloody insides next to you. Darkness falls upon you. The cat sounds happy. Nonsensically, you wonder, wander where the yarn has gone, but there's really no need to worry about it. The cat seems content with the next best thing. Ending 11. The end of your rope. Wow. I love the names of these endings. I think my laser pointer still works. Cats are curious creatures by nature. They're also natural hunters, sort of, sort of. Why not pass the time by letting the cat hunt after something? It'll never quite understand. That sounds a little mean when you think of it like that. But it's not like the cat will know anyway. Ignorance is bliss, or so they say. So you dig out your old laser pointer from your long gone dreaded days of group presentations in school. You flip it on and see that even all this time the batteries still work. You get a little kick out of aiming at the mirror, hanging in the living room, and so it reflects off the glass, making a little red dot appear on your knee. The cat cautiously walks over, stopping every few steps to cast a look of suspicion at you. When it finally reaches you, it lightly presses a paw to your knee, like it's trying to catch the dot of red light as casually as, casually as possible. Hmm? Huh? You manage to hold back a chuckle. Not that it really matters. The cat isn't paying attention to you at all, totally focused on the light now resting on top of its paw. <laughs> you move the light a little higher above your knee. The cat reaches immediately, trying to pin the light down. But in the next second, you've already moved it to the floor. The cat jerkily follows, attempting a more energetic pounce when you shift the red dot. Over here? Over there? And over there? By the couch? Aww, this, this is actually really cute. On the couch. <laughs> the cat might be ignoring you, but you're certainly enjoying yourself. It's been a while since you laughed this much. You're laughing so much, in fact, that you actually shift the red dot onto a lamp beside the couch. In its haste to get the light, the cat leaps on a lamp, sending them both to the ground. Oh, I'm kind of expecting that. <gasps> oh my gosh! Uh, uh, hi. The cat is sitting in the middle of the former lamp's broken shards. Back hunched, its head whipping around back and forth as if in a panic. Quickly turn off the laser pointer and rush over. I I'm so sorry. Are you okay? Are you, you hurt? You reach down to pick up the cat and check it for any injuries when... As always, it's gonna slash at you. Ow, ow, hey! The cat swipes at you, claws extended. It backs up and twitches away, making frantic half-turns in various directions, as if looking for something. Or waiting for something to appear. Oh, jeez, that really hurt, you know? You hold the hand, scratched close to your chest. It's bleeding. It's not too big. You're more annoyed than anything, but... <coughs> Emilia, your annoyance starts to bleed into concern. You watch in shock as the cat starts to run over, tearing at the carpet, the sofa, your armchair. You want to stop it, but you're afraid of getting in the middle of its rampage. You consider calling a vet for advice on how to calm it down, but for some reason... You feel like that wouldn't be a good idea. What happened to you? Is it... An idea comes, uh, comes to you, or rather, a realization. You grasp the laser pointer, aiming it safely away towards the floor in the middle of the living room, thinking, hoping that the cat would calm down if it found what it was looking for. You turn on laser pointer. The cat's reaction is immediate. It's Jesus! You screwed up. In the span of mere seconds, you watch as the cat spies the red dot from its perch on the shredded armchair. Leaps high into the air. Changes in the air. And slams down on, upon the dot on the floor with a weight and force that shakes the whole apartment. Maybe even the whole building. You wonder dazedly how none of the other tenants have rushed over to complain about the noise. Yet as you stare at the sight in front of you, 
The cat somehow grown in size, eyes bulging and glowing, tail thrashing, teeth enlarged, bared and covered alarmingly in a bubbling froth. Its giant claws rip and tread through the carpet, through the floor tiles and even below them. Ravenously trying to get at the red dot, your hands are shaking. You don't know what to do. You feel trapped. You have to get away. Get it away from you. You slowly back up towards the door. The light moves with you. Instinctively, you flick the light away. This way. And that. The cat stampeding after it. Jeez. So fast. Smashing through the TV. Breaking the couch in the half. Too fast. Bulldozing through the, hall, the wall into the hallway. A chance. You turn, intending to blow out the door and never come back. But in your haste, you forgot something. You forgot several somethings. You forgot the laser pointer, gripped like a lifeline in your hand. You forgot the mirror, so miraculously hanging on the wall next to the hallway. The laser reflecting off on it, off of it, putting a small, glowing red dot on the back of your head. As you reach for the door, and you forget that it's locked. Jesus, it scared me. You don't even have the chance to turn around before the cat lunges all the way across the room at you. Okay. You're torn to shreds before you can even blink. Ending 12. Targeted. Hide and seek. And that's the last one we're doing. And then I'll probably do a part two. What about hide and seek? Mm, seems like it. You're not quite sure how this thing is going to work. Even a cat understands the concept of a game. Let alone one with rules that like hide and seek. Oh, can a cat? That was a question. Uh, here, just... You pick the cat up and turn them away from you, hiding behind the armchair. You're almost certain the cat must have turned and looked while you were hiding. Cheater. Cheater is why you don't trust cats. Out of confusion, at least, if nothing else. Oh, oh, but that's really cute. Regardless, a few minutes later, the cat cautiously peeks around the armchair at you, eyes curious. You smile and scoop it up, holding it out in front of you. You found me. You win. Seems to enjoy it. The cat looks confused, but pleased at your praise. This time, you put it on the, on the armchair, so it can't see your hiding spot as easily. You dash over to the kitchen, hiding behind the counter. It takes a little longer this time for the cat to find you. This time, when it does, it startles you by hopping down into your lap for the countertop. It's freaking adorable. Whoa! You found me again. <laughs> okay, okay, you win. <laughs> it's really cute. You reward it with little scratches by the ear and under the chin when it leans into your touch. <laughs> okay, why don't you give it a try? You go and stand in the middle of the living room. The cat following you. You make a show of covering your eyes and turning around. Okay! Five, four, three, two, one, go! You turn around and see that the cat is gone. Huh, sure catch on quick. There aren't that many places available in your apartment for someone your size to hide. But without the opposite thumbs needed to open the closed doors in the hall, the cat will have its limits too. Fair game. Okay, now where to look? Um, let's look in the living room and did it go far? You look behind the couch and the armchair. Under the, then under the coffee table. Nothing in the living room is pretty sparse when it comes to furniture after all. Uh, the hallway. You peek around the corner of the hall. Nothing. You're not sure where, what you were expecting. With all the doors closed, there's nowhere in the hall for the cat to hide. What the f- what, What's with the sound? Kitchen. You peek around the counter, grab a chair and check on top of the fridge. You even open the cupboards along the floor just in case the cat managed to squeeze inside. Nothing, you decide that's for the best. The kitchen is making food, not playing games. Couldn't find the cat anywhere. 
start to get a little worried when you hear a soft sound coming from the hall. You head to the hall again and listen. It sounded like it was coming from your bedroom, but you walk down the hall to your room and gingerly open the door. That's one of my favorite words, gingerly. The cat trots out and runs around your legs, meowing insistently. It looks disappointed somehow. Perhaps your apparently subpar seeking skills, but you lift the cat into your arms and look at your bedroom door. How did you get in my room? You, you know the door was closed, right? The cat wiggles out of your hold and runs down the hall. You follow to see it sitting in the middle of the living room. Upon seeing you, the cat promptly turns around. Guess I wants to keep, take turn seeking? You're about to indulge it by hiding around the corner again when... The lights, did the power go out? Ah, darn it. As you wait for your eyes to adjust in the darkness, you notice that the cat hasn't moved an inch. Was it scared? Hey, are you? What? For some reason, your heart starts beating faster. You. You consider going over to the cat, but when you do, thought makes you feel You feel like your life is in danger. You need to hide. Now. Oh, uh, uh, get out, uh, it's locked. Uh, get out of the apartment. You're halfway to the front door. Oh, uh, you look at the door and see several more locks on it you know you have. You peek over to the cat, it's nothing, it's not looking at you, but you feel a wave of disappointment practically pouring from it into you. It feels almost like a warning. You look back at the door, you're feeling slowly subsides, letting you breathe again. There's no getting out then. You need to hide. Uh. Uh. Hall. And kitchen counter. Behind an armchair. Uh, let's do hallway closet. You quickly slip in the hallway closet. The door won't close because it's heavy box not blocking up your squeeze inside. You try to move it further, the cat might hear it. That is, if it hasn't heard you already, it won't work. You need to hide somewhere else. Hurry. Uh. But. Uh, bathroom. Uh, uh, when the door is locked, you face up with the noise, adjusting the doorknob, breath, listening. The silence coming from the living room makes you feel heavier, more restless. Even if it was a miracle open the door now, it would know exactly where you were. No good. Uh, 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 hall? Just in the hall? There's nowhere to hide in the hall. I get that. I'm just panicking. Hide in the bath bedroom. You quietly rush to the bedroom, carefully close the door behind you. The only place in your bedroom is your closet. Uh, risk another hike spot. I just want to see the other options. Uh, armchair? Uh, too close. Uh, kitchen counter. Uh, 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 didn't work. Uh, I hid there once before. In your bedroom. Uh, yep, yep. Uh, hide in the closet. You lock the door as quietly as you can for lunging into the closet and sliding the door shut. As soon as you secure yourself inside the closet, there's a sudden shift throughout the entire apartment. As if something can sense that you're as ready as you will ever be. As if it can sense that you are ready to be hunted. A horrible chill runs down your spine as you realize that's what this game has become. This isn't a simple game of hide and seek anymore. This is being hunted by a predator as prey. It, it never really mattered where you chose to hide, did it? As if in answer to your question, you hear a loud slam on the other on the bedroom door. You just managed to hold back from making a startled noise at the sound. Your heart rate kicks up again, making it feel hard to breathe quietly. Hard to breathe in general. Tears fill your eyes as you cover your panting mouth with your shaking hands. It knows. It knows. Crying with your hands over your mouth, trying to smother the choked sounds leaking out of you. You slide down the wall at the back of your closet into a heap on the floor. My god! Little spit. You flinch harshly at the sound of the door being ripped off its hinges, followed by a loud crash against the wall on the other side of the room. 
like the door had been blown away. The silence that follows. It's almost too much to bear. You. You can't. A single sob escapes through your nose. You squeeze your eyes shut in defeat at how loud it sounds in the quiet of the room. Not much point hiding anymore anyway, is there? You instinctively put whatever energy you have left into listening for footsteps, even as you emotionally shut down. But you hear nothing. 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 Then... Something slides open the closet door. You've curled in on yourself. Knees up, back curled forward, head down, mouth covered, eyes shut tight. So tight, it hurts. You don't want to look. You don't want to look. That's what it's waiting for. It won't end. It won't end you without this final act of cruelty. Of making you look at it before it takes your life. So. So cruel. You just want this to be over. So. You open your eyes. You see something glaring in at you from the darkness beyond the closet door. It looks disappointed. In the moment before you draw your last breath, you must consider apologizing for being such an unworthy prey. <laughs> Guess your hiding skills were just as subpar as your seeking skills. Thing 13, disappointing prey. No, straight up death on that one, but that's probably my favorite ending. Holy crap. Oh, what, what dent have we made? Eight out of 40. At least we're getting like a line of endings going. Anyways, that's it for this episode. I really hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much for making this. This is so cool. I'm definitely going to be back with another part. I'm going to go in a corner and cry. Just with, like, how it hooks you, that's like a 10 out of 10. The horror itself is like an 8 out of 10. The cuteness, oh, 9 out of 10. 9 and a half out of 10. Uh, I'm not ready to, to rate this one yet until I get to the ending. That's when I give my full... It probably cats out of 10, let's be honest. Thank you for clicking on the video. I hope I made your day just a little bit brighter, even though this cat probably made it darker. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.